In this video, you'll learn about the quantity theory of money, the Fisher equation, and the contrasting views of Keynesians and monetarists on the quantity theory of money. The quantity theory of money examines the relationship between price changes and the supply of money within an economy. A useful way to look at this relationship is the Fisher equation. The Fisher equation states that the money supply times its velocity of circulation is equal to the price level times real GDP. Let's look at the variables individually. M represents the amount of money in circulation, or the money supply. Velocity, or V, measures the frequency by which a unit of money is used across transactions, or its velocity of circulation, in a given time period. For example, if a $10 bill is used in 50 transactions in a given year, then its velocity is said to be 50. P represents the economy's price level for a given period of time. It is measured as an index against a base year, but the base year would have a value of 1, not 100. Y represents the real value of finished goods and services sold in a year. This means that it is equal to GDP expressed in the prices of the base year, not the current year. Therefore, the money supply times the velocity of circulation will equal the price level times the value of real GDP. The identity shown will always hold as a value of what is purchased will equal the value of output produced. Essentially, MV is equal to the value of purchases made in an economy in a given period of time, whereas P times Y is equal to the value of final goods and services sold in that same period of time. It is always true that if something is sold, it has also been purchased. This is why these values will always equal each other. Another way to see this is to understand that the value of final goods and services purchased in a year will be equal to nominal GDP. Equally, the value of final goods and services produced and sold in a year will also be equal to nominal GDP. Milton Friedman, a Nobel Prize winning economist, once said that inflation is always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon. This quote represents a common view of monetarists and their belief that inflation is tied directly to the supply of money. They hold both the velocity and output constant. Therefore, if MV equals PY and V and Y are constant, an increase in M will result in an increase in P. If we solve for P, and then P is equal to MV divided by Y, and remember, if V and Y are held constant, then the value of P is solely tied to the money supply. However, not all economic schools of thought accept this idea. Keynesians argue that the velocity of money and output are not constant. For example, in the recession of 2008, many central banks around the world pursued policies of quantitative easing that dramatically increased the money supply, but did not necessarily translate into dramatic changes in the price level. It's important to note that there is significant debate around this topic, and the link between the money supply and inflation is questioned by many. Now let's practice what you've learned. Here's a challenging problem for you to try. If nominal GDP is $500, real GDP is $250, and the money supply is $50, calculate the price level and the velocity of money. Here's a hint. M equals $50, and Y equals $250, and remember, MV must equal PY. Pause the video here and try to solve it on your own. We'll see how you do in just a moment. If nominal GDP is equal to $500, then we know that MV and PY both equal $500. Since we know that the money supply is equal to $50, we can solve for the velocity of money. $50 times V equals $500, which means V equals $500 divided by $50, or 10. Similarly, if we know that real GDP is equal to $250, we can solve for the price level. P times 250 equals $500, which means P equals $500 divided by $250, which is equal to 2. Remember, the dollar signs cancel out. Therefore, let's go back to the original equation for MVPY to check to see if we did this correctly. M, or $50, times 10, which is our velocity of money, should equal 
two, which is our price level times two hundred and fifty dollars. Right, again, remember this is just MV equals PY. It does check out, so we know that we've got our answer correct. So by now, you should have a better understanding about the quantity theory of money and the Fisher equation. Also, you should be able to distinguish between the monetarist and Keynesian view of the quantity theory of money. It's a quite complicated topic, so if you've had any questions or problems, leave them below, or leave a comment below, and let's try and answer them together. Now that's us done for now, and I will see you in the next one.